Hello students, welcome back again to a fresh new video on a very important concept on epidemiology. Students, you all already know that you have to study this concept uh, for the subject of uh, code having having the code BHM401 for the Macauth for the hospital management course. Here we have a very important concept that is known as the natural history of disease. Now, we shall look into different aspects of the natural history of disease. But first, step by step, let us take a very brief view of the process through which we will try to understand the concept of natural history of disease. So in this video, I shall first take a look into the concept of history. Yes, friends, that same thing history that we all have studied because that history is very important to understand the history of disease. Next we shall take a look into what natural history is and finally we shall bring the concepts of history as well as of the natural history in the context of disease. Students, in order to know the concept of natural history of disease, we first have to know what history is all about. So if we take a, the definition from a very popular professor of history, it is something like this that you can see on the screen. History is concerned with all those human sayings, thoughts, deeds and sufferings which occurred in the past and have left present deposit and it deals with them from the point of view of happening change and particular. So, if we speak of a history, we need to take a very short journey into all that we have learned in history in our past. So, if you take this entire world, what you find is the humankind starting to learn something, starting to be civilized. They are arranging their foods, they are killing animals so as to prepare flesh from them and finally they have learned how to cook. Today what do we see is the human civilization. We see buildings all around, tall buildings, monumental buildings, Greenery is very restricted, very well decorated. So this is where we have transcended from the earliest stage to the current. What we did is that we recall the history that we have learned since our childhood. Now the concept rises of what natural history is all about. What we are seeing is of natural history obviously. We shall be taking a look into the definitions of natural history to learn what natural history is all about. It says that it is the history involving nature, obviously. This history involves nature and its organisms, which includes animals, fungi and plants, their spontaneous behavior, their evolution and their existence in their natural environment. So when you're speaking of natural history, we are studying every element of nature as it is found in natural environment itself. We do not have any kind of artificial interventions into the natural history. So what kind of study is this? It basically is an observational study. In the study of natural history, we are trying to observe rather than performing any kind of experiment. So we don't call the study of natural history as an experimental study because we do not intervene into the spontaneous flow of a natural process. What we do, we stay aside but we keep on observing the natural process as it gradually unfolds itself into nature. Since we already peaked into our old concepts of history as well as of natural history we must must now move forward 
to bringing these two concepts into the study of disease. Before that, we should be knowing what disease is all about. We can say that the disease consists of different symptoms as can be found as different lesions on the screen as you can see. But it's not always necessary that disease will only be evident over a surface of skin. Disease may be inside you also. So what is the disease? If we define it, it has been said that it is a condition. If you see the definition, you will find that it is a condition of the living human body or of one of its parts that impairs normal functioning and is typically manifested by distinguishing signs and symptoms. So disease is the condition of abnormality. It can spread through different mechanisms. It can be caused from different agents. The one that you can see is a virus that is a COVID virus that is a cause of disease that is affecting the mankind nowadays. There are other diseases also in the human civilization. Some such diseases are spread by different vectors as example is given here a mosquito vector. So this is a very rough concept of what disease is and based on this concept we shall now try to associate the concept of disease to the concept of a natural history. So students in order to know or in order to extrapolate the concepts of history into disease we must first know the stages which are present generally in the majority of the diseases that the humankind suffers from. So the minimum phases of the disease are number one an incubation period, number two a prodromal period that is a period when the acute stage of the disease has not yet begun but the disease causing agent has already entered inside the body. I have not yet mentioning the stage 3, I am directly skipping over to the stage 4 which is a convalescence period that means a period which is used by a patient when the patient is reviving back to normalcy from the disease state. If there is a convalescence period and the disease is still not leaving the body then comes the stage 5 which is a chronic period. The final stage of the disease, we call it in short as the termination of a disease. Now among all the stages, we have skipped the third stage. The third stage is the one for which majority of the patients visit the physician. That stage is the acute period. So putting the periods in order, the first one is incubation, second is prodromal, third is acute, fourth convalescence fifth is chronic and the final is termination of disease. Now what do we mean by a termination of a disease? That means the ending phase of the disease. Ending phase means the ultimate consequence of a disease. Let us have a look into the types of the consequences that each disease can have. Here we see a person exercising. Would you call this person as a disease? Obviously not. But this person can be a person who has recovered spontaneously from a disease. So a disease can lead to a state of health finally if the patient recovers spontaneously. So health is one of the consequence of a disease. Another consequence of the disease is in the diagram that you find on the screen. Here you see that the person is sitting on a wheelchair that means the person is not anymore in the state of health the person cannot walk of its own the person has become disabled so disability is one consequence of a disease apart from these two consequences the last consequence that a disease can have is the sad consequence it is the death okay so these three are the possible consequence of any disease. The knowledge of the 
possible consequence of any disease now we are in the stage of moving forward and learning the concept of natural history of the disease first take a look into the definition it is said the natural history of disease is the course a disease takes in individual people from its pathological onset until its eventual resolution through the consequences okay so right from the stage of onset till its termination the entire course of events in the sequence as it occurs in naturally that sequence of events is known as natural history of disease in other words we can say it something like this that it signifies the way in which a disease evolves over time from its earliest stage of its pre pathogenesis phase to its termination as recovery disability or death in the absence of treatment or prevention see this is the point to be noted if we are trying to prevent the disease then we are stopping the history as a whole or if we are trying to treat the disease then we are not allowing nature to take its own course that means we are intervening into the natural process the key points to note in natural history is that it covers the complete course of events in a disease progression progression from what progression from its onset till its termination so it reflects the entire stages every stages one after another until the disease terminates the next point is the most important point it is said that we are not intervening the natural process we are allowing the nature to take its course when from from the time of onset where to to the termination the termination can be in any of the three death disability or spontaneous recovery that we have already discussed before and the final thing to know in key points is that it checks in individual people when its pathological onset that is the inception until its eventual resolution through complete recovery or death so from an inception to resolution or to termination the entire course of events as it goes on in the nature is the natural history of disease now with the concept of these key points we shall now try to look into illustration of the natural history of disease have a look the entire course of the disease has been divided into two phases one phase known as the pre pathogenesis phase another phase known as the pathogenesis phase how do you define pre pathogenesis phase it is that phase of the disease when man is not involved that means the disease causing agent is existing in the environment so the agent is in the environment and host that is the man is separate from these two factors now when these three factors comes together we call this collection of three factors as epidemiological triad so when there is a triad this triad produces a disease provoking stimulus so the epidemiological triad bring agent and host together or produce a disease provoking stimulus so the next phase that is the phase of pathogenesis begins when a stimulus for production of disease is present in the human host now in the human host the series of events that goes on is shown in the linear form with the help of these arrows in the human host there is an early pathogenesis after that it produces a discernible early lesions which causes an advanced disease which leads to convalescence we have already defined what convalescence is or 
In another pathway, what is possible in the human host is an interaction of host and stimulus. Thereafter, the host, that is the human, would produce a reaction. All these two things can lead to recovery, even without producing any kind of signs and symptoms. So when there is signs and symptoms, that transforms into the clinical horizon of the pathogenesis phase. Now, before the transformation into clinical horizon, what, Ill for what all the things that goes on inside the human body has been summed out in this area. Let us have a read. What it said is, tissue and physiologic changes. Stimulus or agent becomes established and increases multiplication. So that is the first stage which causes the tissue and physiologic changes. And that changes is reflected in the signs and symptoms. When we find that reflection, we say that the disease has entered in the clinical horizon. After the signs and symptoms, now is there illness. It might happen that the illness would recover spontaneously, as you can see with this arrow. But it might also happen that the illness progresses farther, farther to produce a disability from the disability, a permanent defect in the body can be produced. That defect would lead into a chronic state and that chronic state is something that is resolved only with death. So all these phenomena are involved with the human host. But in this part, we do not find any direct involvement of the human host. That is why the NHD, that is Natural History of Diseases, has been divided broadly into a pre-pathogenesis phase and a pathogenesis phase based on whether or how deeply the human host gets involved into the disease process. So with that illustration, we shall be putting an end to this video lecture. Before that, before leaving, I would like to give you a list of the other things that you need to know of natural history here you can have a look that is the types of natural history or different phases of the natural history and each disorder has their own natural history which you all should know and the finally why should you know natural history of a disease that is the utility of the natural history and most importantly is the method that means how you should study the natural history of any disorder with that I should be bidding you bye. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, do subscribe and and do not forget to share this video with others, with all your friends who can get some amount of help on their subject that they are studying. If you have any suggestions, if you have any feedbacks, then here is a WhatsApp number given to all of you. You can text all your suggestions, all your feedbacks into this. The comment box at the bottom of this video is also available for you to write your comments. Hope to see you soon with a new video on some other topic of your syllabus. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.